Big thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. All right, welcome to my daily commute in my Tesla Model 3 using Autopilot. I wanted to do this video so you can uh, ride along with me and just see kind of how Autopilot reacts in certain situations in 2020. This was filmed uh, one of my last commutes during before quarantine started. So I thought this was a good day to do it because it's kind of dark outside. It's early in the morning and it's raining a little bit. Uh, I remember my last video that I did with the featuring Autopilot when I talked about Autopilot versus OpenPilot. Got a lot of questions about how Autopilot does in dark situations at night and in the rain, uh, especially on my 45 minute commute where I use autopilot most of the drive. For you to tell if autopilot is enabled, right now it's not enabled, but you can see on the screen here, I just enabled it right there. Uh, and the way you can tell autopilot is enabled by looking at that blue uh, steering wheel icon. And here you can see it turns blue. And when that icon is blue, that means autopilot is enabled. Uh, and it's in control of the car. So that way you know uh, throughout this video, you can see when autopilot is turned on or off. So autopilot is turned on and we're driving through the rain. I'm in the left-hand lane because I set this speed to a little bit over the speed limit just so I can show you what the automatic lane changes, how those work uh, upcoming in just a few minutes because this will have to uh, automatically cross over four lanes of traffic by itself. And we'll see how that does. So you can see it's raining and autopilot is handling it really well and you see the visibility out the windshield is not that great and that's just show you, showing you how well autopilot does work when it's raining honestly when it's heavy rain i like to enable autopilot because i do trust it more i mean it's it's it makes more sense to have uh, autopilot engaged for me when it's heavy rain because it gives me just extra eyes with all the cameras and if autopilot does uh, run into an issue it will alert me, it will disengage and take me, tell me to take over anyway. So it is kind of scary when you lose eyesight uh, at times like that. Autopilot can surprisingly handle it what, better than the human eye can. And there, there is an automatic lane change. I initiated the, the turn signal, but the autopilot will do the lane change by itself. And it will also do automatic lane changes to get back into the slower lane and to the faster lane if you have the full self-driving option, which I do have. That costs $7,000. Uh, so if you don't know the difference between the two, so basic autopilot is included on all Teslas now, and that includes traffic aware cruise control, and then also it includes auto steer. Uh, but if you want to have some of the additional full self-driving capability features such as navigate on autopilot, which will navigate you from on-ramp to off-ramp and it will uh, do automatic lane changes and it will uh, take exits uh, based on your navigation, that's included in full self-driving and then also with some other features, uh, including the uh, automatic stop light and stop signs, which we'll, we'll take a look at, at the end of, towards the end of this video. And um, here I have navigate on autopilot enabled right there. You can see on the screen where it says navigate on autopilot with that blue button right there. And there when it flashes blue, if you saw that it just flashed blue, that means it's asking me to put my hands on the wheel to make sure that I'm still paying attention. With autopilot, it does require your hand on the steering wheel at all times, but if you do take it off, it will continue to, to work uh, for you know five, 10 seconds, depending how fast you're going. And with rain and at night, the amount of time with that, with your hand off the wheel is shorter. If you were doing it, you know, just a bright, clear day with nobody around. Um, so you definitely have to keep your hand on the wheel almost at all times. It automatically recognizes if you have your hand on the wheel or not, and it will flash and alert you if you don't. And if you don't touch your wheel, it will automatically disengage and you will have to take over. So it's a good idea to always keep a hand on the wheel when you're using autopilot. And here we're upcoming uh, on some lane changes. You can see my exit is coming up here in about a couple miles, and you can see where autopilot will um, try to do automatic lane changes. See right there, it pops up saying upcoming lane change. So it knows that my exit's coming up and this is all navigate on autopilot is doing this. It's initiating the lane change by itself. It's doing the lane change by itself. And we're gonna have to do this for four lanes of traffic and we'll see how it does. So it's initiating the next lane change and it's working perfectly so far. And here it's alerting me upcoming lane change again. And it's doing another lane change here. The automatic lane changes in Tesla Autopilot ever since version 10 of the software have been really smooth. They definitely improved and almost perfected the lane changes um, with Autopilot. I mean, even when you initiate it manually, if you turn the turn signal on, it does the lane changes really quickly and it, and it does it safely. I mean, it knows based on the eight cameras, the eight surrounding cameras, and the 12 sensors and the forward-facing radar, 
all that combined, it, it has worked 100% of the time, the, the lane changes. I mean, it doesn't make the lane change if it's not safe, but it does it very quickly and it always stays within lane. And you, you can just see right there, it lane changed into all the very right, the far right hand lane from the left hand lane by itself uh, through four lanes. And now it's taking the exit by itself based on my, uh, in my address, my navigation. The autopilot has been engaged this whole time. It took the exit and merged. It's going to merge here. So it's still engaged and emerged onto the new highway. And now we're going to get back in the fast lane and I'm going to speed this up a little bit more. We're going to go pretty fast because this is just pretty simple stuff. When it comes to autopilot, it's just staying within the lane and it keeps the speed that I set. Uh, and I'm keeping in the, in the left hand lane because I know that I am going faster than most people in the right hand lane, but based on your speed, autopilot will go back into the slower lane. I thought right here, maybe autopilot would go back into the slower lane because usually if it doesn't detect anybody in front of you, it will automatically put you back into the slower lane, which it did not. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know what uh, criteria it uses to, to determine whether or not it puts you back into the slower lane. I think it's because I have my, my speed set pretty high. And so if it was set lower, I think it would go back into the slow lane, but it kind of knows there are vehicles up ahead that are that I'm going faster than. And then you can see somebody merge right in front of me. Autopilot slows down. Uh, never had an issue. I mean, it always keeps a safe length. I set my follow distance to two car lengths. If you put it anything higher than that, I find that it just people will just uh, overtake and pass you so easily. You can see it's not heavy rain this whole time. It's It's been drizzling, but uh, absolutely not like crazy heavy rain. But so far, you know, this whole time, the uh, rain has not affected cameras at all. And sometimes you'll run into uh, situations where the rain will cover the cameras and really autopilot will not be, it'll say, it'll give you an alert and say autopilot is not available due to reduced visibility on the cameras. So far during this drive, that has not happened. It has not had that issue at all. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and usually it doesn't, but there are some times where I think fog affects the autopilot cameras more than rain does usually. Uh, so, you know, I'm initiating these uh, these lane changes manually, but autopilot is taking them, is doing them by itself. Navigate on autopilot is still enabled. So it knows, it's saying right now, it's going to upcoming lane change and, it, and it's going to do this all by itself. So it initiated that lane change to get into the right lane because the exit is coming up and it does it. And here, when it gets off the exit, it takes this exit by itself. And here it's gonna say, you see it on the screen, it says navigate on autopilot ending in 25 feet because I have to go left and it's not merging onto another highway. Um, so now I eventually brake right here. And when I brake, it automatically disengages autopilot. So now we're on a, a highway that's uh, not a typical interstate. Uh, so this is almost like city driving because there's spot stoplights and everything. But here during this stretch of my commute, I don't enable autopilot. I just enable the traffic aware cruise control. I can set my speed up to whatever I want and it will keep that speed and it will also brake and slow down in case the car in front of me slows down and then it will also speed back up. All I have to do is steer it. I do this because on this road, <laughs> as you can see, a lot of people go faster than normally and autopilot when you have autopilot enabled it limits your speed to uh five miles over the speed limit so on this road my my limit my speed limit would be limited to 60 miles an hour on this road because the speed limit is 55 and if you're on traffic aware cruise control like i am it will let you set your speed limit to higher whatever you want right here you can see this truck <laughs> this bed is definitely within, it's in my lane, the back of it, right there, and it's sticking out on the right. And autopilot, or I should say, you know, traffic aware cruise control detected that and it automatically slowed my vehicle down. You can see right here. So right here, you can see autopilot starts slowing down. It starts braking uh, pretty, pretty abruptly. And that's good because it should, because it's in my lane. If it detects anything in its lane, it's gonna slow down. To override that, I know that I have room, I see it. I just press the accelerator right there. And once I press the accelerator and I'm back and I moved past the uh, obstruction or whatever it's in my lane, it will continue on and set its speed back to whatever I have set. So now it's back to normal and we're driving under uh, traffic aware cruise control right now. Up here is a very interesting scenario. And this is kind of one of something I wanted to test 
and why I did it uh, on this drive as well, because it turns into a, a single lane because of construction. And right here is when I enable autopilot right there. Okay, you see the blue icon is lit up, so autopilot is enabled, and you can see it's moving into a single lane. Now, one thing I do not like about autopilot, it will automatically center in whatever lane, even though this is a widening lane, this is usually a problem on merging lanes when you're merging and the, the lane is super wide and then it, then it narrows. On the wide part, it wants to center itself no matter what. So you can see here, it turns to the left and tries to center itself right there because it thinks this lane is a wide lane. It thinks the, the yellow line here on the left hand side, uh, it, it wants to take up this full lane. I wish that it would just keep and, and hug to the right lane marker instead of trying to center itself in a wide lane because it should just stay to the right. It should just stay where it's at. It shouldn't jerk to the left right here. And eventually that will be fixed. Okay, here's when it's normally a four lane uh, highway and they've condensed it into a single lane both in, uh, both ways. And so these lanes are super, super narrow and it's going over a bridge. So there's a guardrail on the very right and then you got oncoming traffic immediately to the left. It's early in the morning, there's not much sunlight, it's pretty dark still. You got shining headlights, and here's a semi truck, and all these cars following behind it. You got this guardrail on the right hand side, and it took it perfectly. I mean, it handled it absolutely perfectly. Let's go back, I'll let this, I'll let this play out again. And you can see, if you look at the Model 3 screen here, you can see the sensors are going off. Super narrow lane, doesn't have much room to work with. You got oncoming traffic with headlights and you got this uh, guardrail right on the immediate right of it and it's centering itself. There is no sway back and forth. It stays in its lane, perfectly centered in that narrow lane. And maybe that's why. <laughs> that's the thing about Autopilot and Tesla. It, it does a very good job at centering uh, between lanes without much movement. It stays really steady. So I thought that was a really good example uh, of showing off the uh, impressiveness of Tesla Autopilot with that single lane uh, road, narrow, narrow road uh, with construction and, and especially with a big semi. Semis take up a lot of space and um, I think I trust Autopilot now more than I do myself when, it, when, it, when I'm going through those, those narrow lanes. So uh, now we're back on uh, Tesla Autopilot and this is something I wanna point out that some people may not know. So Autopilot's enabled, right? But I'm actually pressing the accelerator because I'm going faster than I have my set speed. Like I said earlier, Autopilot's limiting my speed to 60 miles an hour, but I'm going 75 just to show you that when you have Autopilot enabled, you can press the accelerator and you can go as fast as you want, but it's going to show you, it's gonna say right there on the screen, it says cruise control will not break. Accelerator pedal is currently pressed. When you're pressing the accelerator pedal, when Autopilot's engaged, it will not automatically break. It will stay within its lane, but it will not emergency break. But I just wanted to point out that you can do that. And that's pretty much most of the drive. So I, I drive at least half the trip with autopilot engaged and then the other half with traffic aware cruise control engaged. Now let's take a look at the new automatic stopping at traffic lights and stop signs. Okay, so this uh, is a video I took recently last week. This is after I got Hardware 3 computer installed and the new update that stops at traffic lights and stop signs. The thing with this though is it slows down at any traffic light that it detects, no matter what the color is, green, yellow, red. If it detects a stop light, it will start slowing down right here. Look, no matter what it is, this is a railroad crossing, it will start to slow down. You can see right here, it starts to slow down it says slowing through traffic control. Use accelerator or gear stock to continue. So basically when it does this, you just press the accelerator pedal, you tap it or you tap down on the right stock to continue through. And so here it slows down for the green light. You can see that it's green. It shows it right there on the, the Model 3 screen. It slowed down even though it was green. And so I had to just tap the accelerator to tell it, hey, proceed through. This is sort of interesting because this is beta. This is uh, sort of like uh, Tesla owners are training the uh, Tesla, the, the neural network, okay? So with Tesla Autopilot, it uses a combination of AI through its deep neural network, and then also with its hardware that it has on board of the computer. It uses information from all Teslas. Now here we're approaching the stop, a stoplight. You can see that it just turned yellow at the top of my screen, and it just turned red right there. Autopilot's automatically sensing that, and it says stopping. And so Autopilot, is doing this all by itself. It automatically stopped at the traffic light. 
So now when this turns green again, all I have to do is tap on the accelerator or tap down on the, the right gear stalk and it will continue through. That's the beauty of this. Uh, the more that people use this, the better that autopilot will become. Now the light just turned green and I tap the accelerator and autopilot's gonna continue through and it's autopilot's driving right now. Now up here is interesting because it's a flashing yellow light. And of course, it's going to stop at all lights. So it started stopping. Uh, so this is, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this uh, option enabled. I don't know, I, I think it's just more work on my part as a driver. This basically means I'm gonna have to uh, press the accelerator through any traffic light that I go through with autopilot enabled. And I don't think I wanna do that. I think I'd rather just pay attention and, and brake on red lights. Now with this enabled, it does limit you to the exact speed limit, which is another thing. With autopilot before this, when you had autopilot enabled, you could go five miles above the speed limit. Now it's limited to the exact speed limit. So that's another downside to using this uh, automatic stopping at traf li traffic lights and stop signs option. Of course, Tesla owners, we are beta testers. We, a lot of us know that going in. I'm not complaining at, by any means. I'm so glad that Tesla is pushing out these updates. It really means that they are working towards that full self-driving option that's hopefully coming in the near future. And speaking of my commute, the only other thing I love just as much as Tesla Autopilot on my commute is my coffee. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. Whether you're staying home or commuting to the office, the last thing you want to do is wake up and realize you have run out of coffee. Well, with Trade, you can get coffee from some of the nation's top roasters delivered directly to your door. First, you take their quiz to tell Trade how you like your coffee and they will curate coffee matches just for you. After that, choose your delivery frequency and your coffee will appear at your doorstep fresh from the roaster. Finally, you rate your coffee matches so that trade can continue to satisfy your particular taste preferences with coffees you'll love. You can experience the future of coffee with trade by being one of the first 100 viewers to click the link below to get 30% off your first bag when you sign up. And even better, free shipping is included. The coffee beans I've gotten from trade have always been fresh and delicious, and they're the perfect companion to my long commute. Be one of the first 100 viewers to sign up at the link below to get 30% off your first bag of coffee from trade.